strips our city when death takes no pity when much is unknown christ still rises when friends are divided when joy feels misguided when we are alone christ still rises Churches are shattered when phrases are muttered, when prayers go unsaid. Christ to rises when peace is all faded, when we are most jaded, when faith turns to dread, when faith turns to dread. Christ still rises when we give to neighbors, when we share our labors, when strangers belong. Christ still rises when we come together, when love is our tether, when hope is our song. Christ to rises when grieving is ended, when bodies are mended, when beauty heals pain. Christ to rises when fear has retreated, when death is defeated, and joy will remain. And joy will
come home to the presence of God in this time. As we pause pause to drink drink in the comfort comfort of of community. community. Come home to the center of your spirit. Resting Resting in the stillness stillness of of prayer. prayer. There we go. Come home to the hope of expectation. And prepare our hearts for holy surprises. Come home to connection and resilience. For we are are the body of Christ. Christ. Come home to this space of belonging and becoming. For God's God's presence presence is here here in this this sacred sacred time time and space. You may be seated. Sacred time and space. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Church in Cambridge. My name is Phil Jones. If I have learned one thing in the last year, it is the truth of what Christ said. Whenever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. You don't need a steeple to make a church. All the same, it is good to be back in this gorgeous building. I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm a liaison to the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization, and I'm glad to be with you this Sunday morning. My name is Lexi Boudreau, I'm one of the pastoral associates here, and we are so glad to have you here in worship with us this morning, whether you're tuning in on our live stream, or you're here with us in person in the sanctuary. We have one more person to welcome into this space together, our guest musician, Molly Jo. Uh, She is filling in for Peter Sykes. She is the youth choir director at Payson Park Church in Belmont and teaches music in the area as well. We are so glad that you are here with us, Molly Jo, and what a beautiful volunteer you offered this morning. As you can see, Beth is not sitting in this liturgist chair as per the bulletin states. Phil is filling in for her. She was not feeling well this morning. We send prayers for healing. And now we continue on in worship and in song. Dear friends, in this silence, let us lay down our burdens and turn to God just as we are. We lay down our fear, our hurt, our regret, our shame. We lay down our excuses and let down our walls. In this silence, let us reflect on our lives and receive God's compassion and grace.
Together, let us confess to God what is weighing on our hearts. Before, before you, you, O God, God and before, before one another, we confess the harm we have brought on our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. Forgive us, O God, renew us, and enable us to grow in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved children of God, hear this good news. God's love never fails. God's grace is unending, and God's forgiveness is always overflowing for you. Offer a sign of Christ's peace now. We do this by folding our arms across our chest, by holding our hands together, by opening our arms in peace and love for the world. Peace be with you, First Church. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. And now let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we come to you today seeking the wisdom of your word. We pray that it might transform our hearts and minds in service of learning more deeply how to embody your gospel. Amen. Our first reading for this morning comes from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will extol the Lord at all times. Her praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and she answered me. She delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear her, and she delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in the Lord. Our second reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then Elijah laid down under the bush and fell asleep. At once an angel touched Elijah and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb the mountain of God. The word of the Lord. Will you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. I have had enough, Lord. These are the first words that the prophet Elijah utters out loud in our scripture reading for today. 
And boy, are they relatable. It seems that the glimmer of hope of things becoming more stable earlier this summer is fading away. The news of the Delta variant exponentially increasing COVID cases around the country, around the world, and the threat of more variants on the horizon feels like we are going backwards in our fight in this pandemic. And this weekend, Greenville, uh, California, experienced its third largest fire in California's history. The fires in Greece and Turkey are also going on. And so much habitat, so many animals and homes were lost. And eight people are still missing. We were reminded of these fires on the West Coast by smoky skies and air quality warnings in our own state of Massachusetts, if you check the weather app. Perhaps as we don our masks to go to the grocery store, we ask ourselves, maybe this mask will help with the smoke too? And then our hearts get heavy for asking that question. When I'm honest with myself, when I read the news lately or watch these new weather patterns take hold, my heart gets heavy. And I want to shout a prayer. We have had enough, Lord. Elijah is in the wilderness this morning, and so are we in one way or another. We enter the narrative in 1 Kings during a lesser-known event in Elijah's life, a time when he finds himself in the wilderness after standing up to King Ahab and their god Baal, when he speaks truth to power and he gets a slap in the face. He's put in so much work to speak God into the world for Israel, to convince the people that God is the one and only God. And the response he gets for this work is a death threat from Jezebel. He's overwhelmed, exhausted and frightened. He's lost and so naturally he finds himself in a wilderness place. He gets tired after the day's journey in this wilderness and lays under a broom bush and says to God, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors, and promptly falls asleep. I can't help but conjure an image of one of us getting tired during the day and just one extra bad thing happens, and as we collapse on our couch, we say, oh, take me now. I feel like that's what Elijah was experiencing in that moment. And he gets honest with God about it. This shocking request for God to take his life is not just one of exhaustion, but one of shame. He says, I am no better than my ancestors. He believes in that moment that he should have figured out a way out of the situation he was in. That it was all on him. And perhaps that he shouldn't feel exhausted at all. Wouldn't a good enough servant of God told him, hold himself together through an uncertain time? I'm just wondering out loud here, but perhaps Elijah is feeling shame because he's expecting that to be a good person of faith in this uncertain time, there is no room for despair or room for leaving himself open to the help of others, that he has to do it all on his own. And perhaps he is clinging to what his vision of the plan looked like. And now that it is all changing, he thinks that signal is failure. And just as he asks for God to take his life, God instead gives him rest in the form of a nap. What happens next is what I find most delightful about our passage for today. After Elijah t lays down for a nap, an angel appears touches him gently awake, and tells him to get up and eat what is essentially a big glass of water and some toast. The angel does this not once, but twice, in case it didn't stick the first time. As if the angel knew that Elijah would forget to nourish himself properly in these days. The angel says, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. And in the end, Elijah is strengthened by that food and goes on to meet God's presence at Mount Horeb not too much later in his journey. Perhaps what the angel here was saying was that the journey 
is not too much for you, Elijah. The angel is saying, the journey is too much for you, Elijah, alone. That this journey in the wilderness is too much for anyone if we try to do it alone and without nourishing sustenance by our side for when we need to stop and rest. This scene reminds me of those steps that you're supposed to take if you're feeling overwhelmed. Have you ever seen that list? Maybe on the internet. The first step is to drink a glass of cold water. Then a simple healthy snack that doesn't require too much effort. Perhaps some toast. Then a shower if you have energy. Perhaps a short nap. A call with a close friend to remind you that you are not doing this hard and beautiful thing called life alone. These are the simple ways we care for ourselves and how we care for one another so that the journey is not too much for us too. God reminds us and Elijah that we need to nourish ourselves in order to continue on in this hard work of being human in this time. I heard this poem titled Heavy by Mary Oliver this week, and I would like to share it with you all this morning. I think it has some wisdom to provide us. Mary Oliver writes, that time I thought I could not go any closer to grief without dying. I went closer and I did not die. Surely God had his hand in this as well as friends. Still I bent, and my laughter, as the poet said, was nowhere to be found. Then my friend Daniel, brave even among the lions, said, It is not the weight you carry, but how you carry it. Books, bricks, grief, it's all in the way you embrace it, balance it, carry it when you cannot and would not put it down. So I went practicing. Have you noticed? Have you heard the laughter that comes now and again out of my startled mouth? How I linger to admire, admire, admire the things of this world that are kind and maybe also troubled. Roses in the wind, the sea geese on the steep waves, a love to which there is no reply. It might be different for all of us, but we are all carrying something heavy this morning. Whether that is the weight of the injustice in this world, the path towards equity that sometimes seems to grow as we progress, the state of our world and the effects of climate change that are becoming more and more severe, the return of the strain of worrying about where this pandemic will take us next, personal grief, losses of jobs, loss of identity, perhaps loss of a vision of a way forward out of this mess, whatever this mess means for us personally. Yes, there is heaviness, and despite all of this, we are still breathing this morning by the grace of God. We are still woken up each morning with hope and possibility of a new day. We are still able to laugh and feel the breeze on our faces. We are able to choose kindness and offer someone a snack when they look overwhelmed. And one truth that the stories of the Old Testament, the Torah, the writings of the prophets, and the histories tell us is that God provides for God's people through messengers, through things that we might at first glance think of as ordinary, a piece of toast, a hand on a shoulder, A word of reassurance that we are not on our own in anything in this life. So I invite us to ask ourselves in the coming week how we are being that messenger that brings nourishment to others and to ourselves. How do we remind each other that there is hope to be found in God's provision? Perhaps it is in these moments that we provide for each other that we are the closest to God's presence in this world. We might be that nourishment with a simple phone call to someone at church you've been seeing in meetings but haven't actually had a chance to connect with one-on-one. Or perhaps someone you don't even know who you see in our prayer list. 
perhaps with an encouraging word to your coworker about the presentation they worked so hard to put together, by taking the time to just pay attention to someone's story of exhaustion and despair and giving them permission to rest. Perhaps by choosing to let go of caring about the little annoying things in our days and using that energy for ourselves and for being present to those around us. These things are gifts. And when we live with some extra grace for others and for ourselves, we are embodying God's love and nourishment in a world that desperately needs it. We are doing holy work. We are the toast and the jar of water. And some of that holy work isn't work at all. It is what we are made for, to admire the things of this world that are kind and maybe also troubled, and have faith amidst our doubt that God is doing a new thing in and through us, even now. Thank you, Lexi. Welcome once again to those joining online and in person. And a big thank you to our guest musician, Molly Cho, um, who I had no idea was going to sing during the voluntary. That was, that was something else. Let's see, a few things in your bulletin to draw your attention to. We have Popsicle Hour today, a pretty good day for it before the rain comes later this afternoon. That's at 1130 on the front lawn of First Church. You can now sign up for a call to return part two by emailing Carlisle Stewart. Meetings are going to begin for that in September. Sign up to attend summer worship in person in August. We actually have some people in the building today. You can click on the link to our reopening plan on our website's homepage slide about reopening, or click the link at the bottom of page nine in your bulletin. Now, the reason that I am able to be here today is to tell you about exciting development at GBIO, the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. Several dozen First Church members led active parts in our listening campaign, and a few hundred First Churchers, all told, came and told their stories at listening sessions in May and in June, sharing what was on our hearts, what was keeping us back, and in lives that are full of joy and bounty, what is keeping our neighbors down. Out of that cloud of stories has risen up a platform out of 1,500 stories across the entire Greater Boston Interfaith Organization, which is a total of 60 mosques, synagogues, temples, and other institutions. We have a platform at last. And the last thing to do on this long journey of listening and discerning as GBIO is to ratify the thing. And I would love, I need, First Church to be represented on Thursday, August 12th. Come, be a delegate, whether you told your story in a listening session or are hearing about GBIO for the first time ever. Come Thursday, August 12th, as we ratify our platform, which we will then take on the road with our first stop being the Boston Mayor's Race. There's a link to register in your bulletin. You can reach out to me, Will Erickson, or Casey Marsh, and I'll see you on Zoom on Thursday evening. And a reminder, if you have any announcements to make, Dan and Sarah are both on vacation until the 16th, so please contact Lexi or Kristen Manville, our Director of Operations, while they're away. We are here for you. Church, I'm speaking to you from one of my favorite local birding spots. I'm at Great Meadows Wildlife Refuge in Concord. It's early in the morning, and you can hear the birds singing around me, greeting the day. During our prayer time, we might hear goldfinches calling, or yellow warblers, maybe a common yellow throat, or an oven bird. Birds start their day early, greeting the earth with the dawn chorus. I find that when I listen to them, I don't need many other words. 
So as we pray today, we'll leave some room for silence and listening. Because listening is itself a kind of prayer. Beloved, God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. With the rising sun, with the birds of the morning, with the fresh breeze and the rustling leaf, with each life that wakes and stirs, and with the earth itself, O oh God, we, your creatures, praise you and bless you. Thank you for opening our eyes today. Thank you for the gift of this moment brimming with life and possibility. Thank you for the wonder of our bodies, cells and pathways, heartbeat and breath, the scent of rain in our nostrils, the taste of summer berries on our tongue, the touch of someone dearly loved, life in the body, tenderness in the heart. God, who has made all this and blessed it, awaken us bit by bit to the beauty all around us. Sometimes we hold too tightly to our gripes and our grudges. Help us open our hands in surrender and receive your gift of peace. We ask your blessing today on those most dear, family and friends, younger ones, older ones, animal ones, all whose names are written in the book of our hearts. Bless them with your kindness and grant them what they most need today. We hold in especially tender prayer all who are grieving. May they know your consoling presence as near as breath. We pray for all who are living with illness, with Ill injury, or with pain. Touch them with healing and enduring hope. We lift up those living with the heartbreak of infertility and miscarriage. Be with them in sighs deeper than words, deeper than tears. God, we ask your mercy on all who feel alone. May they come to know your love for them as the realest thing that is or ever has been. Holy God, we pray for your creation burdened by human carelessness. Help us to find our right place in the web of life, taking no more than we need, giving back more than we take. God, keep us from despair as we remember all the damage that has been done. You have called us to be helpers and healers. May our lives answer back, yes. In the quiet of this moment, we pray for our human family.
be with all those who are in need in these tumultuous days. Be especially with the ill and those who care for them. We pray for all who live under the shadow of oppression, fear, or want. And we give thanks for those whose lives, like prisms, reveal your light, shining even in utter darkness. We bless you for all who share, teach, create, heal, lift up, feed, and liberate their communities. May their brightness reach into every suffering corner of the earth until the curtain of night slips away and a new day of justice and mercy dawns. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our light and our life, who teaches us when we gather together to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our, our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us, us from evil. For thine, is the kingdom, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever. forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, what is our response to God's love? There is nothing in our lives that belongs to us, not one thing. Who we are and what we have are gifts from God, to be shared, not owned, to be given freely, not held tightly. Then let us now share our bounty of blessings and give freely of ourselves this morning. The offering will now be received either online or at the basket in the back of the sanctuary. power and love. We ask your blessing on these gifts we share for your ministry in this place, in our community, and in our world. Guide us to use them to build bridges and shelters, to feed and empower, to heal the world in Jesus' name. Amen.
children of God, go from this place knowing God is with you in whatever comes our way on this path to justice, to freedom, to love's embrace. We ask God as we leave this sanctuary, this sacred time and space, to give us food and nourishment for the journey and all that we encounter. Go in peace, friends. For you are the church. in Christ, thank you so much for joining us either in person or online this morning for worship. We will be gathering for possible hour out on the lawn, even though it's a little cloudy this morning, for some fellowship and for some treats and uh, water. So uh, feel free to join us uh, this morning. And if we don't see you this week, have a wonderful week and a blessed week. 
and we hope to see you soon.